Greetings, everyone. The walking wounded are in the house. <laughs> Today, we're going to talk about issues and anomalies because, in real estate, as we know, everything goes perfectly. Yeah. Right? Because issues are anomalies, right? Yes. <laughs> anyway, more right after this. such a mouthful of teeth. I was, I was actually, oh, that's exactly what I was thinking about. I was like, man, you have such a pretty smile, Bill. Those are really and they're white. all still his. Yeah. It's a shame. That's a good thing. Yeah. Okay. So thank you so much for joining us on the Real Estate Investor Show. Hard money for real estate investors. We are Carolina Capital Management, private lenders for uh, real estate investors in the Southeast. If you're interested in looking uh, if you are interested and want us to take a look at one of your projects, <laughs> go to carolinahardmoney.com and click on the apply now tab. If you're not interested, don't. And if you would like to invest money passively, you can tell them where to click. Oh, I thought you were going to. Yeah. I'm just, I'm just yeah. helping you get through it. Yeah, we it. sell notes. Yeah, just All dribble right. in and pass it. Click yeah. on the accredited investor tab. Don't forget to like, share, subscribe, hit the bell and uh, don't forget about Wednesdays with Wendy. Um, Wendy devotes 30 minutes per person on Wednesdays. Talk about anything real estate. Take advantage. There's her link to get on her calendar. She's usually booked up a couple of months in advance. We also have a question, comment, nasty replies over on the right or left side of your screen or underneath, depending on what platform you're viewing us from, because we are on many platforms. Mm -hmm. They just can't get rid of us. Just uh, what we're not looking for is the dating uh, sites to, to be put on there. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yep. See, we're on rumble even. So <laughs> we want to talk about multifamily real quick. Um, multifamily. We have seen, um, rents go down year or month over month for the last gosh four to six months and we will continue to see that happen um when we say but go, not everywhere right uh, most places but yeah not everywhere um and it's just and it's the rate of of falling doesn't mean they're not <laughs> it's such a weird thing to say it doesn't mean they're still not rising they're just not rising as fast so the rate of appreciation is just slowing mm. um and what's going to keep that bolstered up as before it hits flat or even it's not going to go negative. It might hit flat in some markets is, I mean, interest rates are coming down now. They will go back up. They will. Um, but we still have a strong jobs market right now. Like it's really strong. So mm -hmm. that's still holding those up and there's not enough inventory for people to buy. So rentals are still very strong. Um, we want to talk about like where, where is the new place that everyone's buying the Midwest? That's the, <laughs> that's exactly right. I have a really good friend. I was on uh Jim Ingersoll's inner circle, um, mm -hmm. call yesterday. Yeah. yeah. And, and we, he, Jeff Chikakachachi, I can't ever say his name. Anyway, he is a lender, um, in Wisconsin. Mm -hmm. And he is kicking butt. He's he's having the best year he's ever had. And his December is just through the roof. He oh, said. Yeah. I mean, people follow affordability. You know, um, there are some predictions that are made for rates. Speaking of affordability for next year, uh, many people believe that the 30 year mortgage is going to hit 8 percent next year um, and then level out and then fall and probably land somewhere around six. Um, maybe five and a quarter, five and a half for that 15 year fixed as well. Um, so, you know, we're going to see that rise in Q1 and then slowly taper off. Um, I thought it was interesting. One of the economists made a point to say, no housing bubble will occur. It's like, th thank you for someone saying that. <laughs> um, the other piece is, you know, it's what Wendy does a lot of is Airbnb, which is crushing it yeah. right now. Yeah. Um, Airbnb just part or doing a partnership with 
apartments, apartment owners, yes. so that they can rent, you know, tenants can sublease their apartments up to 180 days. And the owners of those apartments who allow that to happen get up to 20% of Airbnb's profit, which wow. is a great incentive. It is. Yeah. It really is. And what's really funny is so many of the smaller towns are kind of getting on a bandwagon to try and keep Airbnb or short-term rentals from being available in their community. Mm -hmm. Hotels have a lot to do with that that are nearby because they think that they're taking away their business. Um, but it's, you know, even here in Rock Hill, we've, we've had a battle trying to, to get them to just be sensible about some of the things that they're requiring us to do. I think one of the Airbnb owners here in town is suing the city. Yes, they yeah. are. Mm -hmm. um, we're all part of that group. So we're, we're doing the best we can to keep, I mean, we we're happy to pay occupancy tax and, and business taxes and everything we need to do to keep it going. But they're like asking us to, um, get approval from people that are within 500 feet in both directions behind us, in front of us, beside us. Do they verify this? Yeah. They oh, want okay. every year get an approval from people that live there, that it's okay to have a short term. So basically rental. what you're doing is you're setting yourself to have to pay the people around you. Yeah. That's a lot of pizza coupons. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, it's, it's just, it's ridiculous. And, and most short term rentals bring up the value of the neighborhood because we have to keep it a lot nicer yeah. than the average Joe just to, to get bookings. And yeah, people don't want to rent a yeah. run down place. We've got to keep our yards up. I mean, it's, it's, yeah. it's crazy. Well, anyway, I digress. Hotels yeah. are losing a little business to the families because they need bigger spaces. Right. But uh, they're not losing business to most business travelers because uh, at a lot of times uh, they're going to events that are at the hotels and the only time they're, they're typically going to, stay in an Airbnb is if they're taking, you know, several people and they, they need a little bit more room. Well, what, like, what, what events do you go uh, to at the La Quinta? <laughs> <laughs> my and we, my, we my just point had, is it's all about convenience, yeah. convenience and, and, uh, and cost. Yeah. We know? just went to a funeral in Philadelphia and had 11 people just in our local little family that traveled up there, rented a six bedroom, 6,000, seven bedrooms, 6,000 square foot, uh, short-term rental. And yes, we had a party on Saturday night with, I don't know, 70 people that were just our relatives. It, wasn't 70. it was. I he needed to count was, the little cousins. Yeah, was he was like drinking. 45. He doesn't know. <laughs> we had a great time and the Airbnb person commented on how clean we left the house. Oh, nice. She was nice. very pleased, but no neighbors complained. We kept it down and yeah, yeah. Um, Good stuff. it was nice. Even, even with all the bodies in the front yard. <laughs> uh, before I forget, just wanted to mention um, some of the fastest slowdowns we've seen in home prices are Austin, Texas, Everett, you know, Boise, uh, Idaho. All, all the bubble markets. Yeah, that, 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 that's that, all quick. Yeah. Um, but the top, um, let me see, the, the highest recorded uh, gains in home prices for 2022, um, South Carolina's number two. Yay! Um, we're number two. Florida's number we're one. Number two. And uh, what was it? Uh, North Carolina and Georgia tied for third. Wow! Which is all places that we lend. Yeah, to um, all your friends. Yeah. So it's, <laughs> that's awesome. You know, the Southeast. Now, with those home price gains, that's a great thing. But they, with with that comes the the opposite side is that market is or these markets are going to see stagnation stagnation possibly. much more quickly than others because they rose so fast yeah i would add a caveat to the florida market however that parts of the florida market are not going to have that because of the lack of housing because mm -hmm. of the uh, hurricane and all the damaged yeah. homes that are there yeah. sure uh, there's still going to be a uh, big need for housing because the storm eliminated a lot of it yeah yeah there is exceptions to everything <laughs> yeah uh, awesome all right well that's all i have what do you have <sighs> Let's talk about anomalies. Here, here, I, can't, I can't not hear that, that quote. Well, <laughs> every, 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 time, every time everywhere. I hear the word anomaly, Bill always <laughs> says it's a geographic anomaly. This place is what it two, two weeks, weeks from everywhere. Two weeks from everywhere. <laughs> That's right. Love that quote. Best movie ever. Um, I need some palm made for my hand. So here's, here's the deal. <laughs> uh, year to date, S and P 500 is down 17.46%. 
Uh, NASDAQ is down 29.59%, and the Dow is down 7.55%. That's year to date. That sounds solid. Deep. Yeah. So the anomaly is that you have people that uh, still investing are, in are it. still staying in the market. <laughs> Well, they're not looking for alternatives. Now, yeah. a lot of times it's because they don't know any better. Yeah. They have no idea what an alternative is and that they can get into a fund. They don't have to buy the house themselves mm. and maintain it. Um, and I do want to, you know, like, like if, you know, if you're in like Tesla or Walmart or something, like you're probably, even if there is a slight lot, you're probably going to stay in it. Cause we, you know, in the next 10, 20 years, do we think that they're going to be around? Probably. Yeah. I, would I, so. I, 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 you know, I understand staying in that the higher riskier stuff that you're in um, more FinTech uh, tech. I mean, that's, you know, that's risky. Early, and, and I don't understand why people are still in that. Yeah. Generally your growth equity stuff uh, you need to be out of. You need to be in something that's producing an income. And unfortunately, most of the stuff that produces an income in the market is going to be really low yielding mm -hmm. right now. Yeah. So real estate, we believe, is always going to be the um, safest, risk averse um, return on your money. What's the difference between safest and risk averse? I'm just throwing them both in. <laughs> Just covering my bases. <laughs> well, yeah, I know. I mean, real estate, I mean, we talk about it, you know, all the time. Uh, you get cash flow, appreciation, and depreciation. Mm -hmm. Like, you get the best of, of everything in the stock market. You know, what's 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 the NASDAQ? Negative 29, 29 and, a half. and a half. Yeah, that's, that's not sexy. You know, and I'm really glad you brought up the depreciation. I, people don't really take advantage of the depreciation that is available to you, especially with the cost segregation, even on the single family housing. Yeah. If, if, it, it has to be a high enough number where it makes it like, like I'll, I'll give you an example. I've got six houses all together in Gastonia. That makes sense for cost segregation because you can do it on all of them together. Actually, when you report them, you can't. They're on the same parcel. There you go. So there you go. Exceptions to everything. <laughs> but here's the thing. I've got a guy actually that's going to be talking on Sunrisers in January. They have a cost segregation tool um, and, and it's 450 bucks. And I wish I had it. I shouldn't be talking without being able to show you what that tool is. Well, you can go to Sunrisers though. Yeah, you can mm -hmm. go to Sun Sunrisers. That's right. We all, I'll put it on that Facebook page, what that tool is, how you can get to it. So it's 450 for the tool. It costs you four fifty for each house that you do, four hundred and fifty dollars. Mm -hmm. And and what it does is it, it it allows you to fill out a form and put all the different things you have to see if it's worth it for you to do the cost segregation on that particular house. Yeah. And and if it is, you give it to your um that's when you buy the report. Yeah. And you give it to your CPA so that they can change that mm -hmm. the way that they're filing for your. Yeah. And all it does is it just speeds up the depreciate what you can depreciate on the, on the property. Right. And it really works for short term rental properties because you also have furniture in there that you're able to. Furniture um, wears out really quick. Yeah, it sure Airbnb does. Or, and it's, it's a, a it's a, it's a hundred percent bonus. I mean, you get a bonus instant depreciation on that. Mm -hmm. um, so it's well worth looking into yeah. uh, to take advantage of that. And, and I mean, that's in times like this, when, you know, we're seeing maybe some rents decrease or stagnate, um, you know, prices aren't, you know, you're not having a, you know, big equity buy on things that you're doing. You really need to take advantage of the tools that are there legally there for you to use. Right. You know, they call them loopholes, but a loophole sounds like it's a cheating. It's not. It's using the the laws as they're written to be able to take those discounts. And, and um, it, you know, if you're a landlord and you're doing your own taxes, stop it. You're being stupid <laughs> because you're, the money you think you're saving is you could get so much more back if you do this correctly. Yep. And really that's what it's, and people say, well, I have just, just have to add it in when I sell it. You don't add a hundred percent back of what you depreciate. It's, 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 uh, there's a calculation. Yeah. There. There's yeah. a calculation to it. And, mm -hmm. and it's, a, it's a lot less than what you're taking off, but you know, you, you want, and here's a great, another great thing is if you can't use all the depreciation in that year, you can carry it over 
and right. use that the next year or the next year after that. So, so the lesson here is stop stepping over dimes to pick up nickels. That's exactly right. Mm -hmm. That's a stepping over dollars to pick up nickels because having a good, um, good person that does your taxes. First of all, you're difference. good at real estate or trying to get good at real estate, get a professional to do your taxes. And your accounting, any books. Because and, yeah. as convenient as TurboTax is, it is not made for us. That's it right. It's made for a W-2 person that uh, doesn't have really anything else going. It could be a self-employed person, but it's uh, they, they don't own properties. So. That's right. In fact, not this Friday, but next Friday on Sunrisers, which is that 7.30 a.m. meeting that we do every Friday, I have a tax preparer, a CPA that's going to be on there. And this, this girl is smart. Her name's Pauline Yen. She is really, really smart. And I'm, I'm really looking forward to having her on there. She's going to be talking about things that we can do at the last minute before the year is out for us Ooh. to be able to have the deductions. Timely, so you don't timely. want to miss that. Yeah. That, that's good. Cause I hate those dumb CPAs. I'm glad <laughs> you have a smart one. Well, what's another, I mean, this market is an anomaly. Yeah. I mean, is, isn't it? I mean, unprecedented. <laughs> it really is. You like that word? Oh, God, I love that word. <laughs> um, yeah, it really is. When it, was the last time that we saw inflation this high, um, inventory this low in real estate, and also a job market this strong? It's it's, it's the weirdest thing. It's but it's just a pull in every direction. Well, I think you always know when Bill's going to say after, something. <laughs> Clearing away. I'm giving you a heads up. <laughs> coming in. He's coming in hot. <laughs> I, I think after the first quarter, you're going to see a lot more companies starting to um, lay off. Yeah, I think so too. Because they have a certain margin they need to maintain, mm -hmm. uh, these larger corporations. Mm -hmm. And labor is the last thing they cut because, you know, it's important to them. Yeah. Yeah. And um, but at the same time, they have to, uh, their obligation is to shareholders. So when you see those margins starting to, to shrink going into the um, second or first and second quarters, you're going to see job cuts. And why are those margins shrinking? Is it because people are buying less? Maybe. Or is it because debt is now so expensive they can't use it to buy back their own stock and inflate their, their stock prices? <laughs> Well, I don't know, know. They said that I uh, heard, uh, heard yesterday that mortgage, mortgage applications are down over 40% mm -hmm. from this they, time last year. But they did a slight uptick. Well, like 1% from the, month the, over month. The thing, the thing to remember is most of the mortgages that we saw weren't just purchases. We had a huge refinance boom going on. Oh yeah. Um, but you know, there's a lot of people that were hired to take that, you know, to take that weight off. And, you know, we're seeing a lot of people being let go from that as well. Yeah. That's so, going to flood the market. What can you guys do in your businesses to um, prepare for issues and anomalies in environments like this? You stick your head in the sand. <laughs> no, number one <laughs> is that you make sure that you are as efficient as possible mm. in your business. So, go through all your bills every month is because you can uh, really get into those subscription stuff oh, that you're not you really down. using mm -hmm. yeah. um, and make sure that you're getting the best and the most benefit uh, out of those before you continue with uh, those subscriptions. We yeah. did that as a company about three or four years ago, probably even four years ago, $16,000. We was, saved ourselves for 20, a year. 2019. It was 16. It was almost 17,000. That's crazy. Yeah, That's really crazy. every, every, month we pick out a certain amount of stuff that we're doing and make sure that we're still utilizing right, it. Right. Yeah. So and, we keep and, up with that. And if if you have your own portfolio of real estate, please break break out your P and L's mm -hmm. by property. Make sure that you have everything recorded by property because as we you know everything for the last three, four years have been easy. One could be like, dragging you, you down. You could just, you just have them all in a pool and everything looks golden, mm -hmm. but you need to analyze each one because you need to, need to know which one to let go and which ones to keep. Right. You know, you might have a ton of equity in this one, but it's your best, it's your best one. It's performing the highest. Maybe you don't want to sell that one. 
No, you you leverage that one. Yeah. So and then you get rid of the ones that are dragging, yeah. and then you can use uh, the, the leverage to buy ones that might yeah. uh, perform. Well, and then people are are complaining too. Well, the interest rates are too high for me to refinance. So start looking for uh, two year loans, three year loans, the ones that we know they're going to have a prepay. Make sure you understand the prepay mm -hmm. and how that works. But you, you, you're, it's only going to be for a short term because yeah. we really believe that rates will come down yeah. a yeah, little we do. and there'll be more <laughs> programs that are offered. That's I think the thing that we're missing the most right now mm -hmm. is that all those programs that were available to investors are really shrinking yeah. and disappearing. So, so that's the thing we need to keep our eye on mm -hmm. is making sure that those DSCR loans are available. Now, I mean, um, and the consensus between most economists is that the average for next year's interest rates are going to be right around seven and a half percent. It's not going down much. Is yeah. It? And that's just the average for the whole year. Yeah. So when you have an investor loan, you can go ahead and tack on one and a half to two points or 2% or on top of that. So you know that you're going to be at, you know, nine, nine and a half percent. Yeah. Not much lower than it's, we are in hard money. It's not. Right? And so just know that and use that underwriting and moving forward yep. for your margins, because yeah, please, please do not underwrite on a basis of something potentially going down. Right. Um, underwrite for, you know, what like, you know, for what you know. And, That's and right. I'm, I'm ultra conservative when it comes to that. Like when I underwrite a property to buy, if it doesn't cash flow at 12% interest, interest only, I won't buy it. Yeah. I, I just, I won't. Now, do we get rates lower than that? Of course we do. But you want to know that if something happens, can this thing at least cover itself at 12%? That's right. So I, I will have to hand it to uh, Silver Hill Financial, part of Bayview. Mm -hmm. um, their 30 year fixed rate program for a commercial property back in the, um, you know, before 2008 was a game changer because as a, as a business owner, as a property owner, um, you know what your expenses are going to be going forward. Yeah. And uh, the typical loan before that was a, a balloon note of three, five, seven years. And what always happens because it's Mur Murphy's law is when it's time for you to refinance, that's when the economy is going to be right. down and you don't have enough money uh, to, to show that you're making uh, enough money to cover the, the payment, which yeah. means you're going to have to bring a chunk of change to, to close, uh, refinance yeah. your property again. Yeah. So <laughs> knowing what you have is always the best. And another piece, just, you know, if, you know, real estate, if you own real rentals, that's fine. If you have a business, you need to be knowing what your production is per person mm -hmm. and what your EBITDA is per person. Um, Explain what EBITDA stands for. Earnings before taxes, interest and depreciation and amortization. Uh, so, I might have mixed them all up. It's there, before but, all your junk is taken yeah. out. So, <laughs> so it's your it's your gross it's your earnings before you know you pay interest. You have you calculate depreciation or amortization, all of those things, um, and taxes. So gross, <laughs> kind of, uh, mostly, mostly gross. Not really. I mean, because it has all of your operational expenses yeah. in there. Um, so you want to know what that is per person, and you want to be tracking that because if you see that dip. And tracking it every month. If you see that dip, that that could be the warning signs that hey, we you know either productivity is down, or the market's changing and we're not getting in what we what we right. need to get in to cover <coughs> to cover what we have. So, That's right. So you it really needs to be broken down per person. And if you have money sitting in the bank, put it. Don't sit it in the bank. Let it earn some interest. Put uh, it in a fund. There's ours is great, doing really well. I'm kind of fond We'd love of it. to have more money, but yeah. there are several good funds out there mm -hmm. that are solid. Yep. That are earning, I hate to say it, double digits. Uh, but you don't be afraid and just leave it in the bank. Let it earn some money. Yeah. Uh, I mean, buy notes, do what you need to do to get some income coming in off of I mean, it. You know, we're not saying, you know, you know, you have your six months or three months reserves. Yeah. Keep that. Yeah, cash, absolutely. For sure. Keep that cash. If you, if you're hoarding all this other money, it's not, 
it's actually costing you money That's to right. hold it or work out of fear. Here's the thing. There's a lot of people that are sitting on their money because they're waiting for uh, the next opportunity mm -hmm. that they missed out on in 2008. And they want to keep that powder dry so they can jump on these deals. 2008 that, is not happening again, guys. The, the, prob <laughs> the problem with that is, is while you're waiting for the great deal to come, you're going backwards. Earning zero and or less. There are always opportunities that will come available. So if you're going to put it into a fund, and even if that fund has a lockup period for a certain amount of time, ask them. Um, you know, you, ask them if you can get it out early, what the penalties some, some are. Will, is it worth it? Some of them won't, but it doesn't matter because uh, you're in the long run, you're going to end up losing more than you're going to gain That's waiting right. for the home run to come. That's yeah. right. So, I mean, again, you know, my personal opinion, steady so, wins a race. My personal opinion is like 2008 is not happening again. And I think there's a lot of people acting, hoarding and out of fear and, if you want to do that, that's fine. Fair but, will get you nowhere. But yeah, you're missing out on earning money right now mm -hmm. and setting up your wealth <laughs> for the future. That's right. I'm laughing because we sound like the stockbrokers. Uh -huh. Don't get out now. No. You're going to miss the upswing. <laughs> I'm not saying just get into anything. I mean, you got to be smart yeah, and do absolutely. your due diligence. But if you can find a, a real estate opportunity that is paying above uh, inflation, Mm -hmm. that's not the same as being in the market while well, it goes down and then you have to write it back up again. This is steady income right. or distribution so that it's going to be beating inflation. Right. Yeah. And that's what you want to do. You want to beat inflation. Mm -hmm. Yeah. You want to beat inflation. I, I saw somewhere where um, like turnkeys are down pretty significantly, like people buying turnkeys. Why are they afraid to buy property? They're, they're probably not cash flowing the way they were. I, well, they, I think everybody the, the got issue, used to the issue is, and I, I, I was I having a conversation with some people at a mastermind these last few days. Um, all these properties for these property management companies that do turnkeys, they were purchased and underwritten and pushed through their system based off of low rates numbers six months, a year, 18 months ago. Right. And now as they're exiting out, the numbers just don't make yeah. sense for a lot of people. Yeah. Um, so there might be some good opportunities to buy properties to even turnkeys and maybe a slightly, I, I say discount, but I guess mark, you know, at or below market, which is below what they thought market was. Right. You know, right. Well, even if your numbers aren't what you thought they were going to be, uh, your rents will eventually catch up. Always the optimist, Bill. I love that about you. I do too. We got to well, wrap it up. I got to yeah. go. Oh, well, it, <laughs> since it's all about Wendy. Well, thanks for uh, bearing with us. And uh, <laughs> we, yeah, we're kind of the walking wounded right now. So thank you so much for joining us on the Real Estate Investor Show. Hard money for real estate investors. We are Carolina Capital Management, private lenders in the Southeast for real estate professionals. If you'd like us to take a look at one of your projects, go to carolinahardmoney.com. Click on the apply now tab. If you are a passive investor looking for passive returns, go to our accredited investor tab. Like, share, subscribe, hit the bell, hit bell. tell all your friends. And don't forget about Wednesdays with Wendy. Yeah. All right. You guys have a great week. Bye.